and keep your word. I swear on my dead mother's soul. All new on Good Day Columbus at 9, he is back to unleash some more horror and chaos. Our movie critics are here to review the long-awaited Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, but don't say it a third time. Plus, we have a look at a trio of other new spooky movies as we look ahead to Halloween, and they were all filmed right here in Ohio. We're sitting down with the director to talk about these terrifying films at 945. And it's going to be a Guten Morgen here at the Expo Center. We're previewing Oktoberfest, getting a taste of the delicious food and a preview of the sounds. Yeah. You're watching Good Day Columbus on Fox 28. You know, Cam really built it up there, and then it was just kind of like, <laughs> like, what was that sound? Was it, did he make the sound or was it the instrument? He was blowing on the instrument, I think. Okay. And it was just kind of a letdown. We're going to make him do better. It was better. a preview for what he's going to give us the big thing later I was going to say, Cam, if you can hear us out there, do better. Make it better. All right. So welcome to the 9 o'clock hour here on Good Day Columbus. Phil, still on a much needed staycation. So my buddy Elise is here with me this morning. I'm excited morning. to be here with you this morning. We've only done this, I think, one other time. I know, so I'm so super fun. excited. I have to do like an Instagram reel or something. And I don't know if you can see them, but they're so adorable. She's wearing football earrings this morning yes theme on point and I'm not gonna ask you to whip your leg up but oh I'm gonna see it? don't set it on off. don't set it on the oh, counter because that's bad luck oh it's bad luck yes don't touch your shoe on the counter but these Buckeye shoes there we go yes it's very t-shirt Friday because I don't have any cool t-shirts yeah this <laughs> is your like way Phil. of amping it this up this is my t-shirt Friday is my high heels I only pull out like once a year hey the accessories are on point this morning <laughs> thank you Katie <laughs> all right so you know what else is on point the season of fall I keep wanting to embrace it I know I went to Bath and Body Works okay yesterday mm -hmm. I bought a lot of candles they were $12.99 or something $12.95 nice. instead of the usual $25 right and it was funny because I was in the section I was like this smells like Elisa. Where is she? <laughs> it was the strawberry pound cake. That Just, is my signature scent. <laughs> that scent takes over. I don't care what other scent is in the vicinity. It takes over. So if you are in the studio and you smell something very sugary and amazing, you know Elisa's somewhere. She's going to pop up somewhere. The gas station attendant at BP told me I smell like fresh baked cookies. You do? It's like a fresh baked good. I was like... Thanks, I think. <laughs> hey, listen, there are worse things you could smell like, right? It's very true. So, yes, fall season is upon us. Buck, tell everybody out there the good news about people that are really trying to embrace these cooler temps. Yeah, yeah I, I like mean, the hot, though. So What's that? I like the hot, as you know. But, you know, once yeah. you feel the cold, you're really going to get into it. Crock-pot season. Sweaters, yes. hoodies. Yes. All right. Uh, Boots. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. See, I'm we're getting there. We're I'm getting in. there. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be a uh, big drop in temperatures coming this weekend compared to what we've been dealing with lately. Today, this afternoon, about 87. Sunday morning, 44 in Columbus, but outlying areas probably even cooler than that. So just for fun, we did uh, issue a flannel alert for this weekend. So get ready for it. It is going to feel so much cooler. The coolest temperatures we have had since May. Right now, we're still pretty warm outside. We're in the 60s, already starting to warm into the 70s in a few spots. So it's all ahead of this cold front that's going to slide through this afternoon and evening. And there's some rain with it. It is scattered. If you have plans for the afternoon and evening today, make sure to have that rain gear handy and ready to go. But much cooler tomorrow. A high temperature only around 70. CW Columbus, we are airing the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week uh, on the CW Columbus. Pickerington North heading to Pick Central. And it's going to be... Uh, little wet maybe leading up to the game a slight chance of rain during the game itself temperatures falling through the 60s during the game and how about tomorrow night if you're going to the Buckeyes game make sure that you are dressed appropriately because we will be falling into the 50s by the end of the game tomorrow it'll be the coolest game of the season easily compared to last week's game but it's going to be a bit of a cool game there and also same time for the kickoff for the crew tomorrow night taking on the Seattle Sounders Temperatures will be falling from the 60s into the 50s for that game, and that wind out of the north and northwest making it feel even cooler. 60s and 50s for those games, and cool for the weekend. Then we warm right back up next week. We're back to 88 there Wednesday and Thursday. A lot of sunshine on the 70 forecast, and it has been giving us a really nice sunrise and sunset the last uh, few days here. Cool shot of the sun set, and this is, I believe, from Wednesday evening wow. from Lori. So a nice little shot there. That's that Picture looks amazing. perfect. Yes, yeah. you can see the rays, the little building off to the right hand side. I could never get those pictures on my phone. You know, like that looks really good. She must have taken that with like a really good camera. She had a couple <laughs> of other ones too with like the sun setting uh, through the barn. There's like a barn on the side, but it was like a vertical photo. So 
our TVs are all horizontal, right. so I didn't use that one, but it was a pretty cool shot of the sun setting through like the opening of the barn. I love that. That's we appreciate so cool. all the chime ins. Yes, we, we love do. them. Buck, go home and have a great weekend. Well, I got to stay for the noon. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. Oh, yeah. We'll see you then. Just see kidding. <laughs> well, the weekend is here, and if you still need something to do, why not take in a concert at Nationwide Arena? You can catch Weezer in concert there tomorrow. The band is on tour, celebrating 30 years since their debut album called Weezer, also known as the Blue Album. It shot the group to massive success with hits such as Buddy Holly, Say It Ain't So, and The Sweater Song. The album went triple platinum and spent six 16 weeks atop the Billboard charts. A few tickets still available with prices starting at $55. They will be joined by other bands, the Flaming Lips and Dinosaur. That music will begin at 7 p.m. So that's fun. There's never a shortage of things to do. There's some really good concerts here mm -hmm. all the time, I think. Every single week, it seems I, like. I'm due for a concert. When's yeah. the last concert you went to? I went to Colby Calais and Gavin DeGraw, oh, and yeah. that was amazing. And it was free. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay. That was fun. Yeah, I need to uh, <laughs> step up my concert game. Well, the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, my mom's favorite, has been coming to Central Ohio for 20 years for the Christmas holiday. Everyone, of course, knows about their show, The Last Christmas mm -hmm. Eve. Yes, but this time around, TSO is offering a special deal on tickets. The band will be here on December 26th at Nationwide for two shows. Tickets go on sale next week. Pre-sale is September 12th and general sale starts the next day. But for the general sale, ticket prices will be $49.99 for one week only. Yes, so you better take advantage of it. Trans-Siberian has broken many records over the years, including being one out of 15 total headliners who gross more than $10 million from Ooh. tickets alone. They're also known for their philanthropy, donating $1 from every ticket sold to uh, charities of their choice this year. They will surpass $20 million donated to charities. That's amazing. A lot of money off of ticket sales. My son loves their version of Carol the Bells, Aww. and so he like plays it on the piano. It's amazing. I love How it. How long has he been playing the piano? He started last August, so about okay. a year. Is he, do you feel like he's catching on and getting it quickly? So he likes the just playing around banging part of it. Well, when yeah. I'm like, sit down and do the lesson, mm -hmm. it's like a fight every time. I'm like, sit down. <laughs> How many times? Just twice. Just do it twice. So. Well, the attention span will grow right. so things can only get better and I know nothing about piano yeah. so I'm just like all right do it again <laughs> I have no idea if you did it right <laughs> hey if you've ever seen Lady Gaga in concert she bangs on the piano so maybe he's got something going. I love that well Travis Kelsey's PR team working overtime this weekend after a false document spread online that he has a breakup contract with Taylor Swift this was so crazy. So his team shut down these rumors very quickly. This is how it started. An official looking document, you see it right here, titled Comprehensive Media Plan for Travis Kelsey's Relations Following Breakup with Taylor Swift. This began circulating on Reddit at first. On the top is the logo for Full Source Media. That is the team that represents Travis. Details of this document include calling the breakup a, quote, mutual decision and framing it as a natural part of life and making sure it doesn't negatively impact Travis's career. So on the second page of the documents, there's an announcement date listed for September 28th and specific outlets to interview with. Taking swift action, the team from Full Source said that these documents are entirely false and fabricated and were not created, issued, or authorized by this actual agency. And all the Travis Kelsey fans and Taylor Swift fans take a huge sigh of relief. The origin of this document is unknown, but the couple looked like they were doing just fine yesterday. So Taylor was at the Chiefs season opening game last night against the Baltimore Ravens, and the Chiefs won that game by a toe. If you watch it, like it was so fast. Like I, and again, I love Travis and Taylor, but yeah. like, come on. Like, I feel like the Ravens should have got, should have got that. I well, and that. like, you know, and then the, the Taylor was kind of overshadowing the toe moment. You know? I know. It's a weird I know. play for the end and of the game. I know that breakup thing can't be real because there's no way anyone that's like a PR person is going to have them break up at the beginning of the season. If anything, you right. would do it closer to the end. Exactly. You wouldn't do it now. Like you would do it later. So, and I don't think it's, I don't think that document is real. Well, I think that it goes on with a lot of people. First of all, anything that starts on Reddit. I know there's a lot of true things on Reddit, there but are. there's a lot of things that are just <laughs> not, you yeah. know, as the rest of the internet. So I think the biggest thing is, is that uh, with them dating, a lot of people have been thinking like, oh, this is something that's right. a PR stunt mm -hmm. to like get more eyes on football mm -hmm. and the NFL is behind it and this and the other. Because the NFL needs more eyes. I, I mean, say, like, I think they're like doing the just sport. fine. <laughs> right. I think it's real. And I think they're going to get married. I think it's end game. I'm very excited for them. <laughs> I agree. It's the I'm end game. It. That's one of the best Taylor songs. And I also loved her outfit. No one would let me talk about it earlier. I tried to mention it briefly. Kurt and Buck both just kind of ignored me. And Let's talk about it. Yeah. I just love the jean. I'm here for yes. a jean moment. You had yes. a jean romper on early this 
this week. Yes, I did. I loved that was it. Wednesday. First yes. thing I noticed when you walked in the room, I love, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear a romper tonight. I'm going to this market. I love the, the jean on jean, the Canadian yes. tuxedo, as they call it. So cute. And I thought Taylor her was, rocking was the bomb. It. I mm -hmm. thought it was amazing. I'm so excited to watch her all season. I had an event last night. I was um, at this Mom X event. And so my husband texted me a photo of Taylor on TV to, to let me know that she was, in fact, at the game. And I was very excited. That show. <laughs> like, thanks for the Joe's update. That's all I care is about. Joe is the best. Not? He makes sure he's best. always looped in on <laughs> right. what you love. Well, sometimes celebs, they just want to have some fun with the media themselves after being constantly in the public eye. And one popular singer is having a blast with it. Yes, yeah, singer Adele joined in by creating her own fake tabloid headlines. So the singer shared her new artwork on Instagram. One of the headlines reads, it's one Adele of a ride with her riding a bike in a venue, at a venue across the world. Another says, balancing act with the singer changing into tennis shoes. <laughs> There's also the one that says, Storm Adele. And the last one says, oh my God, since she broke a world record for her breaking $100 million residency <laughs> in Munich. Adele is not shy when it comes to talking to or even clapping back at the public. There are countless videos of her on stage engaging with audience members doing just that. I love this. That is you awesome. You have to, though. I think that the only way that you could be sane, mm -hmm. you know, and keep your sanity as a celebrity is mm -hmm. by having that mentality about the press. And she gets a lot of positive coverage. I feel like most of the stuff you hear about Adele is like positive anyway. Right. She's a positive person, mm -hmm. but I'm sure it still can be a lot to get like so much eyes on you all the time. And so making fun of it like well, that Well, they can't funny. do anything. Right. They can't go anywhere. <laughs> if they go on any type of podcast or talk about anything, it becomes a headline. It would be mm -hmm. exhausting. Yeah. And so like, is write she your married? own headline. Is she not married? Mm -hmm. You know, like all that. But no, I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> what well, is the beginning of the end for the show? 911 Lone Star. Fox confirming that the upcoming fifth season Season of the hit show will now indeed be its last. So the first responders drama headlined by actor Rob Lowe and Gina Torres is set to premiere in just a few, a few short weeks. This marks a milestone for Fox as Lone Star is the last drama series on the network produced by its former corporate sibling 20th Television, which used a supply are used to supply a majority of Fox's scripted series before the TV studio sold to Disney in 2019. So you may remember that Fox canceled the original 911 before Disney saved it and moved it to ABC last year. But as of right now, there are no plans to do the same with Lone Star. However, there are rumors of talks of a new spinoff in the works at ABC set in Las Vegas. The final season of 911 Lone Star will feature 12 episodes and premieres September 23rd right here on Fox 28. So if you're obsessed with this show, at least you get 12 more episodes. Because, you know, sometimes seasons are short now. Oh, yeah. It's like four or five episodes. And at least they announce it before because it's disappointing if they don't announce the show isn't coming back mm. and you're like, it ended on a cliffhanger. That's Wait, the worst. You so. know, I've been on my grim journey. Oh, yes. Okay, <laughs> so this has been ongoing for months now. It's a, it's a long, it's a long going show uh -huh. and the seasons are how they used to be back in the day. So okay. there's like 12, 15, sometimes even 20 mm -hmm. um, episodes in a season. Yeah. So they're very long. So I'm finally on the, the last season. I just crossed over into it. And everyone said sad. that they were really upset because Grimm just like stopped airing. Just ended. Like abruptly. And that's like really disappointing. You thought like you lost a friend. I know. So at least I'm <laughs> going into it mentally prepared. Right. You know that's coming. Mm -hmm. Cam, are you out there with the horn still? I am, Katie and Elisa. Now that we have the right microphone set up, because I did do it last time, here it is one more time, preparing for Oktoberfest as we toss the break. We got cream puffs coming up next. Listen to this. Get ready to polka. Schmidt's Oktoberfest back in action in Columbus at the Ohio State Fairgrounds. And Cameron Fontana is out there live. Oh, got rid of the horn. What are you doing now, Cam? Eating. Yeah. You know, I dominated the horn. Now we're talking about the domination that's going to come tonight from Team Cat. And you're like, what's Team Cat? We're talking Cameron Fontana, Alisa Henry, and Tom Bosco as we get ready for the Stuff the Puff contest. This is actually my first time doing this. I'm so excited. What a tradition, right, Kyle? 
Yeah, it's it's super fun. We love doing it. We do the celebrity stuff, the puff, and then we do a creep puff eating contest for the crowd too, so that you can get involved in. So uh, we love it. Uh, we love cream puffs, and we love watching people show their face <laughs> in cream puffs too. I guess it's so <laughs> hilarious to watch. And obviously, Matt's putting together some of your traditional cream puffs right now. Why do you think these have withstood the test of time? Because clearly, when you say cream puff, Schmitz is synonymous with that phrase. You know, it's just uh, for the amount of time that we've been in Columbus yeah. doing what we do, right? It's just, uh, like you said, synonymous with Schmitz. And um, they're, they're, frankly, they're just addictive anyway. Oh, they're <laughs> you so good. You eat one good. and you want another one even though you're full. Now, these are the traditional vanilla. I know last week we were on the Buckeye Trail where you guys introduced the Buckeye Cream Puff. Are you going to have any other flavors this weekend or just this one? Yeah, we're going to do our pumpkin cream puff as oh. well for Oktoberfest. So we, we usually roll that out in October, yeah. but we always pull it out early for uh, Columbus Oktoberfest since it's so fantastic. fall flavor. Nice. So you get your cream puffs here. Matt's working on more right now. He's got the scooper. Oh, he's got the pumpkin one. So we're going to see, I'm assuming, a hint of like orange in that one. Is that what I see oh, yeah. as it comes up? Here we go. Wait for it. Oh, there it is, the pumpkin cream puff. So 7.30 tonight, stuff the puff. You're going to have cream puffs all weekend long. And uh, I was going to ask you any tips, but I do know the strategy for tonight, and I don't want to give it away. Yeah, don't tell Andre. <laughs> Andre isn't going to be here. He's the reigning champion, but he's also a Picktown native. So I'm also competing tonight on his behalf. So Team Good Day Columbus, we're just going to talk smack right now to say that. Uh, I'm going to put money on us tonight. Is that okay? I, I, you're, my do you have faith in you. me from I when do, you see me to Green Puff? I saw last year, so uh, I have faith. I do have a strategy. Again, we're not going to reveal it. But I think we should have a little Cream Puff eating contest right now. Does that work for you? I, it do you want to count us down? Yeah, I'll count uh, down. Now, official rules are hands behind the back. That's right. Only your face, right? Yep. All right. You All ready? Right. Eins, zwei, drei. Ooh, just uh, kidding. If you want to see the gonna action, you're going to have to come tonight at 7.30. That's called a teaser. You can't give away the prize fight before it actually happens, Kurt. Uh, well played, it. gentlemen. Well, you had us all. We were like, wah. Good. All right. Ah. Give us a reason to watch tonight. Thanks, guys. Good morning, everybody. Here's some of what's making news here on our Friday. We're almost one month now into recreational marijuana sales in Ohio launching, and the state is now putting a cap on dispensaries in Ohio's three biggest cities. Right now, 123 medical dispensaries are operating under dual licenses, selling recreational as well as medicinal marijuana. But the state is putting a hold on more licenses uh, from being approved in Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland after looking at data like demand and population. Those three cities have a total of 28 dispensaries. The next round of approval started earlier this week. Big Lots is permanently closing its West Side Distribution Center. That'll happen by the end of October, and all 379 employees are being laid off. The company's headquarters are near New Albany. News out of the executive suites over the summer hasn't been good. Last month, Big Lots announced the closure of 315 stores company-wide. In June, a loss of $205 million for the quarter. The company blames a lack of consumer spending. The July report, though, from the Department of Commerce shows Americans are actually spending more these days. People living in Akron now finally able to return to their homes after a fire at a chemical plant prompted an evacuation. It involved chemicals such as propane, methanol and xylene. People were evacuated from homes and businesses that were within a half mile radius of the plant after a small explosion was heard in the building. Neighbors were allowed to return after the EPA found the air quality was within normal limits. That's a look at your headlines, and uh, bless you, Katie. Thank Back you. Back to you. I'm sorry, I was coughing, I was sneezing. You're, <laughs> You're just trying to, all right. You're just trying to just do his job through. over there, and I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kurt, we appreciate you. All right. Well, coming up, September just starting, and that means new movies are hitting the big and small screens this week. That's right, Mad Wolf Movies is here to break down the hottest releases, including the return of an underrated Scream Queen. We'll be right back. Full measure is back and illegal immigration and the border crisis are top issues in yet another presidential election and not just here in America. This week on Full Measure, Cheryl Atkinson investigates the surge of illegal immigration gripping Europe and joins us now with a preview. Cheryl. 
Yes, on my recent trip to Europe to report on all of this, I learned that their illegal immigration crisis, which has been going on for quite some time, is arguably worse than ours, believe it or not. They have economic crisis as a result, they have crime, they have culture clashes, and now both sides of the political spectrum in Europe are under pressure from the public and promising to do something about it. It is changing the face of politics across Europe. There are many parallels between what's happening in Europe and what's happening here in the United States. That's our cover story Sunday on Full Measure. And you're also digging into conflicts of interest in what our doctors are being taught and by whom? Yes, uh, my new book, Follow the Science, is out this week. It's called Follow the Science, How Big Pharma Misleads, Obscures, and Prevails. And from that book, we're going to take a look at the surprisingly slanted information that doctors are sometimes taught in their continuing medical education classes. For example, as far as they're being taught, the child who was the first serious COVID vaccine injury happening in a COVID vaccine trial doesn't even exist. At least that's what doctors are being taught. All right, you can catch Full Measure right here on Fox 28, 930 Sunday morning. And for a behind the scenes look at Cheryl's stories and investigations, look up the podcast Full Measure After Hours wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Good Day Columbus continues in just two minutes. It's been 36 years since we were introduced to Beetlejuice. Well, he's returning to the big screen today. Plus, Brandy faces off against a boundary-crossing mother-in-law in her return to horror. Joining us now with a look at this weekend's new releases are Hope Madden and George Wolf. Always a pleasure to have you guys. Thank you. Got your t-shirts on. That's right. Carrying on Phil's tradition. That's right. <laughs> in his absence. That's right. But yes, I forgot about the Brandy movie, so we'll get to that yeah. one second. But I am so excited for this movie. When I saw your review go up, I was... So ecstatic. Yeah. Okay. You guys are happy. You, you yeah. guys are happy. happy. I was going to be upset if yes. you weren't happy about happy. it. I know, like you said, 36 years Gosh. to get most of the gang back together, and it's fun. It is really fun, and it was a big movie for me when I was a kid. It was like, you know, the first time I saw Lydia Dietz in my small town, Ohio, I'm like, you could do that? You could be that girl? <laughs> it was huge for me, and, uh, and so I was... I was wary about this because Tim Burton has been a little kind of off his game okay. in the last several films, yeah. but he is back on it with this one. It's so much fun. Um, it looks great. The whole cast is very, very funny. Jenna Ortega joins the cast, right? Mm. And and she has not the main story, which is what I was expecting. She has kind of a secondary story, and, and we still spend a lot of time with Winona Ryder. It's so great to see her back. Catherine O'Hara is hilarious. Jenna Ortega um, gets herself into some trouble uh, with a boy. Of course she does. And then her mom has to save her with the help of Beetlejuice. And the biggest thing, of course, is that uh, uh, Michael Keaton is just hilarious. They give him a lot of fun things to do, a lot of great set pieces. Okay. There are a lot of callbacks, but there's some new information, some new characters, too. It was just tons of fun. And people should watch the first one. You or will. do you have to? You, uh, you know, I don't think you... It's not brain surgery, this right. movie. Okay. Uh, you know, but why would you not watch the first one? Because <laughs> it really makes you understand Beetlejuice's kind of obsession with Lydia Dietz. Yeah, it yeah. does. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and what's cool is, you know, it has the look of the first one, but yet the effects are better. It cleaned up the effects, but it still looks the same. Yeah, okay. You know, that, that sort of... That uh, Tim Burton yes. kind of animated yes. vibe. Oh, sure. Yes. Yeah. I know, Katie, you are super excited oh. for that. I really <laughs> am. And I and I think it's cool. I mean, could you imagine being Tim Burton and then, you know, 36 years after the fact, this movie is still a, a, yeah. you know, something that oh, everybody yeah. watches. Yeah. New, new people that, you know, weren't even born when it right. came out. Right. <laughs> and Winona Ryder and him still have their, their vibe, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very That's cool so cool. stuff. Very All right, cool. let's talk about the front room. Yeah, this is Brandy, as you mentioned, back in a, in a thriller that might make you appreciate your mother-in-law a little bit more. <laughs> Sometimes perspective is a good thing, right? <laughs> this one, you know, it's an A24 film, and a lot of times that means, you know, sort of, you know, like art house horror, they call it. But this one is, is a little different for them. It's, uh, you know, she's pregnant, and her mother-in-law um, offers basically to pay off all their bills to pay off their house and to leave everything to them, her and her husband, if they will just let her move in. And, and you know right come away. On, come on, mom. <laughs> it's a terrible decision. She's super pregnant and not, you know, in just a, a few weeks time, she's gonna be alone with a brand new baby and this insane mother-in-law. And, um, and you know, uh, it's funny because it's a lot of it is sleight of hand. You keep expecting it to become one thing and, and it's really just more about um, how horrible other people's families can be. <laughs> <laughs> 
Relatable. But, uh, the main, I mean, Brandy is great, but the woman who plays Catherine them, Hunter, Catherine Hunter, okay. is glorious as this just unhinged nut of a mother-in-law. She's okay. so wonderful. She's hilarious and scary. Uh, and she's really what makes the movie worth watching. I love that. We have a second thumbs up I of the morning. So, yeah. Are we going to have three? Rebel Ridge? We are. Maybe? Yes. We are. I was excited about this one. This is uh, the new one from Jeremy Saulnier, which is a, one of our favorite filmmakers. And it's about a former Marine who takes down a, a crime-ridden small town. Yeah, it's basically a modern-day Western. Uh, they, they hassle this guy coming through town. A lot of complications happen. He uncovers corruption with this small town sheriff played by Don Johnson. Uh, the former Marine is played by Aaron Pierre, who's actually going to be the voice in the Mufasa movie right. coming out soon. Oh, okay. Uh, and he's great. I mean, you don't want to mess with this guy. <coughs> but they do, and there's a bunch of corruption. It all makes sense. It's all plotted out very well. And it gets to that point, you want him to give it to him because they deserve it, and he does, Ooh. and it's 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 really a well-constructed thriller. You know, I kind of like to hear that because for some reason I've become obsessed with shows where the bad guy just gets taken down yeah. by the oh, good yeah. guy. You're just yeah. rooting for these people. Yeah. Yeah. It empowers me for some reason. The whole yeah. town, the whole town. Except he's got one informant uh, on his side, and you think it's one person, and there's another sleight of hand yeah. that they, they, they kind of misdirect you. So it's really well done, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a, a great good movie. Pick. I love that. Yeah. Real quick, you have your band tomorrow. Oh, yes. <laughs> you want to mention that really quickly? Yeah, the, uh, the Grandview Ox Roast is going on this weekend, and my band, the Trans Fat Orchestra, is playing tomorrow afternoon. So before the Buckeye that's game right. at 4 30, <laughs> so come on out. George, I can't keep up with you and all the things <laughs> you do. When I'm like, George's band, I'm like, wait, what is he? Yeah. The man of many talents, awesome. radio, TV, movie director, uh, and no. bandmate. All right, well, it. you guys have a good one. We Me appreciate too. it. And their full reviews can be read where? Medwolf.com and Medwolf. Columbus on the socials. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, coming up, Ohio is becoming the hot spot for all things film and movies. Movies big and small being filmed in the Buckeye State. So cool. We have one of the director pairing for his new movies to hit the screen. We're sitting down with the director bringing some horror to Ohio when we come back. This Monday, September 9th, American Idol auditions coming back to Columbus. We're trying to help folks prepare. We're talking right now, Patrick Lynn, senior supervising producer with American Idol. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us. Oh, thanks for having me this morning. So you have a really cool job, first and foremost. Um, what what is it like uh, from your position of seeing all these hopefuls come out and you know put their best foot forward? Yeah, I I, I do have a cool job. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, so Monday is uh, is our big IAA day. We call it Idol Across America. So we're coming to Ohio and basically we want people to come on to Zoom and audition for the show. It's kind of how we do it now. It's super easy. Um, all you got to do is go to AmericanIdol.com and you can sign up uh, for uh, Monday, September 9th and we'll send you a link uh, to a Zoom room. And I'm in that room. I'm sort of a master of ceremonies of the main holding room because we all know a, a, a main Zoom room can be um, it can be a little challenging if nothing's going on. So I'm always there. I bring in ex idols and talk about stuff and explain how it all works. And I really try to allay people's fears so that, you know, trying out for American Idol, uh, you know, doesn't make people too nervous. You don't want anyone to get up there and try to sing and just throw up, right? <laughs> that would be correct. That would be a situation. So Patrick, tell me a little bit about what you guys are looking for and, and how you guys prepare to see all of these folks who want to show you their talent. Well, you know, uh, the, the auditions now, we, we do them all on Zoom, which is great for uh, the contestants because they can do it from the comfort of their own home. And that in itself, I think, uh, really kind of like helps people kind of allay their fears a little bit. But, you know, we'll have them come on and we'll put them in a separate breakout room with a producer from the show. And what we're looking for is, I mean, the easy answer to that always is like, well, we're looking for a superstar. But the truth of the matter is we're looking for potential. We're looking for sort of that diamond in the rough. I tell people all the time, it's like, we're not looking for perfection. Uh, right. We're looking for people that are going to be good for the show. Makes sense, because you do have a, a, some, an entertainment value here that you have to provide. Um, so if people are thinking about coming and you know, uh, signing into the Zoom session and showing you guys what they're made of, um, how can people do this? What is the best easy way to kind of, you know, shove people in that direction? The easiest thing is just go to AmericanIdol.com and once, once you're there, you can sign, uh, you can create a profile and uh, select a date, uh, which would be Monday, September 9th, and okay. we will send you that link once you fill out your profile because, you know, we obviously want to know, you know, who we're getting so when they come in the room, we're ready for them. 
anything that they have to do beforehand in terms of, you know, paperwork that they have to fill out to register, anything that they should have handy with them that you might need from them? Well, the only real kind of paperwork, as, as it were, the digital paperwork is signing up with your, your name and email, maybe a picture, uh, mm -hmm. and just, you know, and really just kind of showing up. But the really more important thing is having a good song ready to go. So we typically tell people to have three songs ready to go. Um, the, the truth of the matter is most people will sing just one song. So have one or two songs uh, that you're ready to sing. And remember, there's two things I tell people all the time, sing a good song, perform a good song because performance is such a big, big part of it. A lot of times people will audition for Idol. And this is when we did it in person uh, and on Zoom. A lot of times we get people that are technically good singers, but then they kind of reel it in on the performance. And we're and I'm always telling people, this is the day to kind of let it all hang out and go for it. Absolutely. Best advice. I mean, let it all out and go for it. Um, and I want to ask you because we were talking about how cool your job is. I mean, this is something that not a lot of people get to do, you know, pulling the curtain back behind this, this popular iconic show. Um, what is one thing that stands out to you? Uh, something about, you know, your, your time in the business of maybe an audition that either really surprised you or was kind of a mess. I mean, we saw them play out on TV, but is there anything that kind of pops out in your mind, a unique story or situation? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's, 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 I've got a lot of stories. I've been on the show for the entire time. So 22. So you have too many stories, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember Clay Aiken when he came into the room and he was this sort of young, sort of geeky guy, you know, uh, he came in the room and I remember he was this guy when, when we lined up people outside, and this was in Atlanta, Georgia, we would line up people on the street and I would walk up and down the line and talk to people, try to get to know them. And every time I passed this one guy, um, he would always ask me a question and it got to the point where I like I didn't want to answer any more questions so I kind of avoided him and that guy was Clay Aiken uh, because he eventually came into into my room and he sang I can never remember the name of the song but it was like from a tv show and I was really surprised I thought, god that's really good and so I, I said sing something else and, and uh, he sang something else and I just remember thinking wow this guy is this guy is exactly what we're looking for and the kind of the rest is history. I mean, Clay's been a friend of mine for for 20 plus years now. So I always like to tell that story, which I think may, might make him cringe a little bit. But you know what? He was just he was asking questions and that was a good thing. He wanted but it's to honest, you know, it's honest because sometimes maybe your first impression of someone, you don't nearly get the idea of what really, you know, talented skill that they possess. And then, you know, like you said, the rest is history. Well, yeah, Patrick. Yeah. I appreciate your time so much. Um, I know that you are a busy bee and I'm hoping that you get some great auditions out of Columbus, Ohio. We'll post all of this information on our website and let folks know. Any last words of advice for anybody out there on that teetering on that line? There's no time like the present. It's time to, you know, you really want to change your current job and become a professional singer. Now's the time. Come to American Idol and try out. You got nothing to lose. All right, Patrick Lynn, Senior Supervising Producer with American Idol. We appreciate you so much and uh, good luck. <laughs> Thanks very much for having me. TV is no easy task, let alone making three of them. But our next guest has done just that. He sure has. Joining us now, director Quinn Armstrong, who's in Ohio for some special premieres of his films. You can see the anthology behind us. So let's talk about these. Fresh Hell is what they all kind of have the their un umbrella under. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did you come up with not only one, but three of them? Uh, so this uh, story begins, like all good stories, with a conversation about the Ohio tax incentive for film. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, we were trying to come up with a project for a long time with this uh, company, Good Deed, up in Ashland. And one day I called them up and said, what if we, what if we just did three? And I expected them to say, no, you're insane. We won't do that. Right. Um, but uh, that is a string of decisions where people have said yes to me in this project, and I've gotten to do crazy things. Don't you nice. love it when people just say yes to you yeah. and just give you the benefit of the doubt? I'm always surprised. <laughs> and not only did you do three, you're releasing them like basically in a row. So one is already out, and then you have one coming out today and then next week. Yep, that's so like right. like all at the same time you're working on these. Yeah, so uh, The Exorcism of St. Patrick and Wolves Against the World are out now. You can find them on Amazon and Apple and all that. And Dead Teenagers, which is exactly what it sounds like, uh, comes out on the 10th. 
Okay. So, yes, you have uh, made your way to Ohio. Where are you from originally? So, I grew up in New Mexico. I live in Seattle right now. Okay. I had some connections with some Ohio folks, but I had never really worked out here. Okay. Um, and so, they told me, come make these three movies in Ashland, Ohio. Okay. And I was thinking, like, well, is there the crew? Is there the cast? All that stuff. And yeah. let me tell you, the, the bench of talent oh, in yeah. this state is astonishing. If this crew, I cannot say enough good things about. They, a lot of them came from Columbus, some from Cleveland, some of them more locally. Yeah. Uh, the most professional, talented, creative people you could ever hope to work we've, with. Awesome. We've talked about it a little bit, you know, on different time periods here on the 9 a.m. and had different people on, you know, mm -hmm. talking about the booming business of movies here in Ohio. And mm -hmm. talk about it from your perspective, not being from here. I mean, were you pleasantly surprised by the workflow and the, the areas that you shot in? Oh, massively. I think one of the things, so I, I'm from New Mexico and I was there when the, the film incentive came through and production just exploded. Right. Okay. And it's fun to look at Ohio right now, especially for people who aren't uh, in the industry, who don't know that a boom is coming. Mm. Um, but I can, I, can, I can feel it, it's, right. yeah. it's coming here. Yeah, that's awesome. So, okay, so we're looking at, I'm looking at these uh, covers right here. How scary are we talking? Because I'm easily scared. Okay. So how do you sleep at night? Like I am gonna be thinking about these photos. <laughs> Don't look, just don't look. <laughs> Talk about the movies. Okay, so what I can tell you and what my, what my usual thing about this is, uh, The Exorcism of St. Patrick is, is the sad one. That's the drama, that's the, that's the tug on your heartstrings kind of one. Okay. There's, some, there's some horror, there's some blood in there, but that's mainly what that's about. With some jumps, some jump scares, yeah, I'm sure. A few, yeah, a few uh -huh. little jumps. Uh, Wolves Against the World is the crazy one. Lots of yelling, lots of running around, lots of blood, all that sort of thing. And Dead Teenagers is the sort of more horror comedy, more the fun one. Horror comedy, um, oh, it's so funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so scared, and it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, Elise, I think you can, you can mark one of these off your list, can't you? I think so. I think I can do it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what you're going to be doing at the Gateway Film Center. Right, so uh, we have been doing these Q&As um, with screenings of Exorcism and Wolves. Okay. Uh, we're doing Wolves uh, tomorrow night at the Gateway. Uh, I'm going to be there. These, these have been such fun events. It's been so fun to just listen to people's reactions to the movies. They get to ask me uh, all sorts of crazy questions like, did you really do that stunt? How did that happen? Yeah, all yeah. these sorts of things. Uh, so yeah, we'll be at the Gateway uh, in Columbus tomorrow night. And it's very cool, I think, for people to have access to yeah. these people that are making the movies and in the movies, just to see how it all comes to actually happen. And maybe even recognize some spots in Ashland. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and a lot of people who have been coming are younger filmmakers who haven't really gotten started yet, who can then talk to me, talk to the producers nice. and learn more and get started. Well, that leads me into my next question. Where can people connect with you? Um, your social media, you have a website, anything that people can connect with you. Maybe they're out there trying to do the same thing. Oh no. So I have no social media. Okay, no website. that's fine. Google my name every two years and okay. usually something will come up, but you can follow a uh, Cranked Up Films or Good Deed Entertainment. Those are the guys releasing this. They okay. have a ton of cool stuff coming out. Uh, so, yeah, check them out. All right, very you have cool social stuff. media, and that's why you have time to make movies. <laughs> I <love> absolutely. <laughs> Quinn absolutely. Armstrong, we appreciate you, and we Thank wish you the you best so of luck much. with all three of these films. I'm going to watch one. I promise I'm going to okay. do it. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> I'm already scared. <laughs> we'll be right back. And welcome back to the Ohio Expo Center, where we are just hours away from the kickoff of annual Oktoberfest, a great celebration of not only Columbus, but German culture, great food, drinks, people, dance, all the things. And we're celebrating some great people right now. We have to my right, Angela, Jim over there, and Carla. Good morning, everybody. So Carla, last details as far as the timing goes and the entertainment, what do people need to know, even as far as parking? Well, parking is $15. Okay. Admission to Oktoberfest is free. So that's probably the, one of the most important things you need to know. Everything kicks off at 5 o'clock is when we're officially open. Keg tapping is at 6. The run starts as soon as the keg is tapped. Celebrity puff stuff tonight at 7.30. Strength competition starts tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Um, and just 
be prepared to come all three days. Exactly. You're going to have so much fun. You can, there's so much to do that you can spread it across three days. It's a free event to get into. All you do is pay for parking. They got a shuttle to the fall home show. And Angela, every year we get to see you and Jim play the outporns. Yeah. What's your favorite part about this instrument specifically? It's so peaceful, right? It like is. it is really a peaceful instrument. And yes, we play polka for Oktoberfest, yeah. but the breathing and the pastoral and just having that nature sound it's really wonderful and not only is the music culturally celebrative but also i want to showcase your nails because oh, yeah. just for today you did the polka plaid i did <laughs> i'm so excited to have plaid fingernails yeah, show this to week. everyone watching to get the inspiration for this weekend there you go edwin i think we got it you got confirmation <laughs> great so again what time's the kickoff today carla 5 p.m 5 p.m now jim earlier on i've been getting better over the years haven't oh, yeah. i it's very much he even brought my own mouthpiece so any more tips before i try to play this one more time just plenty of air plenty of air i got a full head of air so that kind of helps right okay. can i can i put my piece in your horn absolutely there you go <laughs> ready sure. again it kicks off today at 5 p.m 5 p.m listen to this <gasps> Oh, I almost got up the try it. We'll be right back. Enter me in the contest. The 9 a.m. is over. It's over. It was so fun. What a great way to kick off the weekend with you, Katie. Thank you so much. Time flies when you're having a good time. Everyone have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.